I'm joined by guitarist James Valentine. Great Hello. to have you here, James. Thanks for having me. We were just reminiscing about how I met you a long time ago. It's That's been right. Like I remember. Years. You, you yeah, didn't remember. I totally didn't remember. <laughs> That's the right. No. It's actually the opposite, but it's great to see you again. Good to see and you. thanks for coming by Huffington Post. Uh, you're in the midst of designing some custom guitars right now, which is very exciting. That's right. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about what this initiative is. Um, so I, I worked with this great company called Ernie Ball Music Man. Mm -hmm. And actually, I've got a, I go way back with them as well. When I moved out to Los Angeles, my band from Nebraska, I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska, oh, shout nice. out, go Huskers. Um, I moved out from Lincoln to LA when my band won a national battle of the bands competition that was sponsored by Ernie Ball. Oh, okay, so you so, guys go way back. So we go way back, they actually, you know, uh, my band won $25,000 in that competition, so we used that to move out to LA to go try and make it. Soon after that, I was poached from that band by what would become Maroon 5. Mm -hmm. um, but. So, so I, I really owe a lot to Ernie Ball. Uh, so it's really cool to be working with them all these years later. So what's the process like when you go about creating your own custom guitar? Well, I have a lot of guitars that I've been playing for many years that I really love. So I, I tried to take the best elements from those guitars and combine them into one guitar. So like I really like Telecasters and I really like Gibson 335s. So we sort of put the best aspects of, of both of those together. That's this cool. gu guitar talk can get really geeky really <laughs> quick, and it can get really sort of inside baseball. So I'll try not. I know. We'll keep I, it. We'll keep it non-technical for the HuffPo uh, entertainment section. I, I can see you holding back <laughs> yeah. a little bit. You're like, how can I simplify this <laughs> yes. for the average Joe? Well, if you're watching on Facebook Live, by the way, uh, send us your comments, your questions, and I'll try to get them over to James on the air. So I'll be checking my phone for that. Um, who are your guitar idols? Ooh, um, you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix, obviously, everybody loves him. Stevie Ray Vaughan oh, yeah. was really big. But I started playing guitar in the 90s, so uh, I started playing guitar the same week that Smells Like Teen Spirit came out. Oh, so, so all those grunge bands, that was huge, Nirvana, but especially Pearl Jam and, and Stone Gossard and Mike McCready from Pearl Jam. Uh, the, the record 10, mm -hmm. that's really where I learned how to play guitar. There's great songs on so that record. So we're talking early 90s, like 90, early. 91, probably. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So how did you how did you pick up the guitar? Just like teach yourself? No, my, my older brother had a band and mm -hmm. I used to go watch them practice and I'd wait until they were done practicing and then I'd go mess around on all their instruments. Um, I was not allowed to do that, but uh, I did anyway. and uh, and. I was just drawn to guitar. I just I loved it. I begged my parents to give me a guitar for a long time. They didn't think I was going to be serious about it. This was at the age where you had all these different phases. Like I was really into karate for two weeks, huh. yeah, and exactly. then I was you know I was really into baseball. And then that actually helped. I think when I was cut from the baseball team, I realized that I wasn't gifted athletically, uh -huh. and I sort of doubled down on on my devotion towards guitar. Well, good thing you were cut. Because yeah, exactly. who knows? I mean, unless you would have made it as a baseball player, but it sounds For, like maybe that wasn't not, in your future. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad guitar was in your future, that's for sure. What would you tell an aspiring guitarist today? Um, well, it's, it's so different today. Like, uh, when I was learning, I went and took lessons. I went and took lessons in Lincoln, Nebraska at the mall. I took group lessons. Wow, which was really I didn't fun. even know they did that. They, they did do that. <laughs> um, but today, there's, there's so many awesome resources online. I mean, there's YouTube. I find myself, when it, when we're covering a song and, and I need to learn a new song, I just go straight to YouTube and there's like 20 different tutorials uh, mm -hmm. teaching you how to play these songs. So it's it's an amazing time if you're, if you're trying to learn, you have all those resources. But I would also say, even though those resources are there, make sure you get out and play with, with other human beings in right. a live setting, because that's, that's a different thing. You can sound pretty good in your bedroom but once you get with other people, uh, you know your your weaknesses will show pretty quickly. So get out there, play. You know, start a band and yeah. get out there and play and play wherever you can. Well, you're going to be getting out there and playing this fall. You're going to be on tour with Maroon Five. That's right. What can we expect this time around? Well, this is uh, this is the last tour for this record for mm -hmm. our fifth record, um, and but every time we go out, we change up the set. Um, you know, we, we have some new covers that we'll mm -hmm. be uh, 
uh, a surprise Ooh. that I think the fans will really dig. Okay, you're going to dig into that YouTube for the how to play that, right? Exactly, <laughs> I did. <laughs> well, I want to get to some uh, questions and comments. Um, Eliza says, "Love you." Okay, that's great. Love you too, Eliza. Um, and Eric Lopez says, "Mexico loves Maroon 5. We love Mexico. Oh, have you been, have you played Mexico recently? Yeah, we played uh, the beginning of this year. Great nice. show. Some of my favorite shows ever. Love Mexico City. Well, hopefully Ola. maybe he was there. Uh, Beth Ann Medina says, I enjoy Maroon 5's music so much, it speaks to my soul. Nice. Oh, that's really nice. And Doreen says, I, w I was just watching your Sugar Crash wedding video. Really awesome. Oh yeah, the wedding video, the crashing of the wedding video. That I was, remember that. That was so fun. Uh, that was the most fun video that we've ever made. Yeah. Because shooting videos can kind of be a drag, but that one was actually a blast and I think that comes through in the video I think that's part of the reason why uh, people really connected with it and I don't know if I'm even allowed to say this but we're working on a new video with David Dobkin the director of that video oh, nice. that I think is is going to be really really special anything you can tell us about it probably not I don't want to spoil it you don't want to spoil it okay no. I get it um so back to touring any crazy tour stories that you can share like what's the craziest things that's happened on the road now being together for 15 16 years um yes there's lots of crazy stories which probably save those for like Howard Stern yeah. maybe not <laughs> maybe, not, maybe not. PG-13 here at HuffPost <laughs> um yeah I mean it's funny. I mean, we we've, we've been on the road for a, a very long time, so sure. we, we've seen lots of lots of things, and it it is as crazy as people probably think it is. But it's also way more boring and routine at the same time. Okay. Most of it's you know those long trips on the bus, a lot of time in airports. You know, that's the sort of that's the aspect of touring that you don't really see in in the movies or on. TV. Sure. Well, what I mean, you have a band. Who's you know the backseat driver? Who's the, you know who's who on the on the tour bus? Well, um, well, back in the day, you know, I used to be the literal driver. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, love it. We, James we, driving the bus. Yeah, we we started off. Well, we started off in a van. Yeah. I don't think I'm qualified to, to drive a bus. <laughs> you don't want me driving the bus. Um, but yeah, back in the day, I used to love to drive. I mean, because we would drive all night and. When, when you were the driver, you got to pick the music. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the main reason I always wanted to be behind the wheel. I love it. You're like, this is the music we're listening to. This is it. Or what, yeah. Okay, what would you make them listen to? I would make them listen to a lot of Steely Dan okay. and Frank Zappa. Okay. Which not all the guys were really totally into. They're like, oh, he's fired as the <laughs> band driver. That's for sure. So are you working on any new music? It's been a couple of years since uh, the fifth album came out. Yeah, we're always kind of working on new music, um, but we do have uh, we have a, a song that I think we're going to put out mm -hmm. in between this record and and our next record, um, which we just put the finishing touches on, and we we have some some more songs uh, in various states of progress that that we'll be working on at the end of this year and beginning of next year. That's cool. I feel like you could do that these days with music. It's very totally. different from them when you first got your start, I think. Uh, totally. Just putting like, out a song or an EP and then moving on to the next thing. Yeah, there's no no rules. And, and even with recording, we used to, like in Songs About Jane, we'd block out the studio for months at a time and we'd be in there every day working that way. And now it's it's a lot more fluid. You're kind of coming in, it, in and out and also sending files to each other. It's, uh, it's totally different. It's totally different. Okay, I want to get to a couple of more uh, questions here. Uh, Dan Summer, what was your first guitar? My first guitar, uh, well, technically the first one was the, the rental Fender Squire. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it came with the eight week crash course that I took at the mall. Oh. <laughs> so I got a Fender Squire and a little amp. And a bonus guitar. <laughs> yeah, and so that was the Fender Squire, and it's still today, I think that's a very popular starter guitar. Um, but then after that, I got an Ibanez EX series, and it was totally, it was like this metallic blues, total heavy metal guitar. All right. Sweet. Barbara says, you guys inspired my son to pursue music. Nice. Well, tell him to practice. To practice. <laughs> and Tracy says, thank you so much for making such beautiful, awesome music and for always touching our hearts. Oh, well, thank That's you. That's really nice. That's really nice. You know, I, I, this year marks the 15th anniversary of Songs About Jane. Uh, that album just exploded, you know, hit after hit. Did you have any idea at the time that it was going to be as big as it was? We hoped for it, but we, we had no idea, really. I mean... Right when when we got done making the record, we kind of 
listen to and we're like, I don't know, man, maybe we might have screwed up. This, this, I don't know if people are going to really get this. And uh, it was it was a really amazing time because that that album took so long to sort of seep into the public consciousness. I mean, it was, but every week some something good was happening. Mm-hmm. So every week we'd see that there were just a few more records sold, or a, another radio station would add the song. And but it took like it took two three years before it really exploded. I mean, we toured that first record for four and a half years. Wow. Because we were on tour for two, two and a half years just trying to break it, and then it broke, and then we were taking advantage of that success that we had made. So um, that was that was such a great time. Yeah. It's so I, long ago. It was a long ago. Like I said, that's so when I talked already. to you guys, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, it was written like personal stories. For, like, Adam, there, it was a Jane, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah Adam had a Jane. Yeah, there is a real girl named Jane yeah. who lives in New York City now. Oh, I do let's know. call her up. <laughs> Jane, are you watching? <laughs> so funny. But, uh, you know, life has changed a lot, you know, since then. Uh, you know, Adam's about to be a dad. Are you guys excited to have a little baby, like, out out there on the road with you guys? Super excited. It's, it's exciting to, to add more members to the family. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it really is. It's like, yeah. it's like starting out 15 years ago is completely different. Completely different. Adam also does the voice stuff, so he's mm-hmm. well, very well known for that. Um, do you think you'd ever be a, a good voice judge? Coach. No, you know, I, I went in uh, and was a uh, a guest consultant, mentor. I don't know. What do they call that? What, yeah. did, what did I do? I think it's a mentor, was, right? They yeah, I was like a mentor. Yeah. yeah. I was a mentor. I think I think someone canceled because I got the call like the night before. They're like, hey, do you want to come in and be a mentor? I was like, somebody definitely canceled. Because otherwise, you wouldn't be calling me right before. But it was a really fun experience. And it actually gave me... Uh, a lot more respect for for what those coaches do yeah. on the show because I was out there with these amazing singers uh, you know just I, I was struggling to even come up with constructive criticism because they were all so good but uh, those coaches really you know with all of their combined experience they actually have a lot of experience to to, to bring to those those uh, contestants and, and they really help them. Yeah, it's really impressive. I really mm. think that you, it's hard to pick, I'm sure, even Absolutely. just being on there. Um, I want to get to a couple more comments because we're getting a lot of people watching and lots of things Sweet. they want to ask you. Um, Duong says, why did you stop using the Telecaster? Well, um, I love my Telecasters. You know, I s- still use my Telecasters, but uh, this, when I designed the, the new Valentine guitar, it with this guitar, I can play. I can play it throughout the entire set of music. Before I would have to switch guitars to do different sorts of things. Again, I don't want to get too technical. <laughs> but my Valentine guitar has a humbucker pickup in the neck and a Tele style in the bridge. So basically, it does a lot more than just a Telecaster can do. And so I, I can play the same one, which which I really like. Okay, that's a good reason. That's a, a practical reason. Uh, Tamika says Songs About Jane is one of my favorite records. Yeah. Did you guys do anything to celebrate for Songs About Jane? This yeah, year? there was we did some what did we do for that? There was, <laughs> It must have been Oh that. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we did a like a DVD box set okay. that has some cool. some extra features from it. And there's like a, a vinyl set that we're gonna release too, but that's Maybe I'm not supposed to talk about that either. Oh, okay. Well, Sorry, I keep yeah. on staring. We're, we're breaking so news here off camera. It's Chris uh, with James. <laughs> Video in the yeah. box, I'm assuming, for that new song that we're going to hear. Um, Linda Lara, what do you enjoy doing on their days off? Um, for me, uh, about seven years ago, I really got into tennis. Huh. I love playing tennis. Um, it's my favorite thing to do. Uh, I'm kind of obsessed with it. Wow. Yeah. that's pretty. Are you pretty good at it? I'm 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 a decent club level player now. Okay. I'm really bummed that I can't stay here in New York and go to the U.S. Open. Oh yeah, that's coming up in just a couple of weeks. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's happening. Up. Um, I gotta go home. You know, take me back to that time. You know, two thousand. So you joined the band, but you kind of were taken away from another band, mm-hmm. and they were Cars Flat Cars Flowers. Yeah. Before that, um, take me back to that time of that stardom where you know you guys, everyone knew Maroon Five. Was there? Was that overwhelming for you? Um. Yeah, I mean, like I was saying earlier, everything sort of happened in a very slow, steady sort of way. So it wasn't like overnight success. Mm -hmm. So it was a few years as people started to get to know us. And 
And it, it's also a great thing about being one of the band members, uh, you know, being in a band with, with Adam, who's, who's, you know, such a, a star, a lot of the attention, uh, the attention gets focused on him, which is kind of a great thing for the rest of us because we can mostly live normal lives. Um, and I, I find that to be a real blessing. I feel bad for Adam. It's hard for him just to walk down the street these days, especially post voice. But the rest of us, we can kind of live our normal lives, and it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, he breaks. I mean, he makes news a lot. I know when he got yeah. married a couple of years ago, you were there. You played right at the at the wedding. Yeah, we were. We were actually just talking about that backstage. I was. I didn't really get to enjoy the wedding as much because I was so nervous because I had to play the processional music and then I also had the privilege of accompanying Stevie Nicks um, which amazing. was awesome we did landslide but it was just me and her on stage so I was sweating bullets the whole weekend like getting ready for that um, but it was it was a lot of fun that's awesome I mean she's such a legend I, I absolutely legend. love her so that's amazing you're also buddies with John Mayer another great guitarist right and you guys go way back yeah I mean it, it's completely random but back in 1996 uh, I attended a, a summer program at the Berkeley College of Music, which mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, probably the place to study contemporary music, jazz, you know, rock, pop. Um, and uh, I became friends with this sort of goofy blues guitar player from Connecticut. It turned out to be John, and we stayed in touch over the years. And and he actually did us a, a, a real solid by allowing us to open up for him on some of his tours. He he had kind of broken, broken out just before we did, so he took us out on tour with him forever, and mm -hmm. and that really exposed us to a lot of new people. So we owe him a lot. That's great. Oh my gosh. Okay, more comments, more questions. Um, Melanie Potter, what is your favorite book? One you have read, or one that you're currently reading? Ooh. Um, well, last year, me and Jesse from the band we read uh, the book Infinite Jest, but. David Foster Wallace, oh, yeah, sure. which, if anyone's familiar with that book, uh, it, it was <laughs> basically took us, you know, like, like the whole, it took us like six months to get through it, but it was it was a lot of fun, and that's an amazing book, and I really recommend it. It's really worth the payoff of, of staying with it. That's <laughs> cool, and then you could compare notes and share. It's, it's, it's kind of like you had a little mini book club. We had a little mini band book club. <laughs> it was great. I love that. Donna Lasora says, "Do you like the blues? And if so, who is your favorite artist?" I do like the blues. Uh, where I grew up in Lincoln, Nebraska, we were actually lucky to have a really legendary little blues club called the Zoo Bar. Shout out to the Zoo Bar um, <laughs> that got a lot of great blues artists uh, through there. But my favorite blues guitar player, it's it's an easy answer, but uh, Steve Ray Vaughan. Okay, yeah, goes back to what my, one of my goes, first questions. Yeah, yeah exactly. Who's your right. idols? Yeah, he's just he's so amazing and. and he spawns so many imitators, it's, it's, it's just stupid. Well, Christy uh, McQuaid asks, what is your favorite song to play live? I always like that question. You know, I really like playing our song called The Sun, which was just a, was a track off the first record. But when we do play that, we do a super extended guitar sort of, uh, there's a solo and then there's a part where Adam and I are sort of doing a guitar battle. That's that one's a lot of fun to play, but you know that's because I get to play a guitar solo. <laughs> it's a little selfish. <laughs> a little selfish. <laughs> a little selfish. But, okay, so so many bands, you know, break up, get back together. You guys have stayed through and through. Uh, you know, what do you, what do you, what, why? Why do you think that is? Um, I think uh, we've always been really good at communicating, and you know, and and also I, I think the reason bands break up a lot of times is that uh, there's there's different people sort of vying for the the spotlight mm -hmm. the the attention and from the very beginning we all knew that that Adam was the focal point of the band and everyone was totally fine with that dynamic mm -hmm. i think you see a lot of bands break up when there's a couple guys vying for that spot um, and so we've never we've never really had that problem cuz everyone's very happy in their individual roles right that makes a lot of sense um, Chandler, what will the next record be like? That is a good question. I don't know. We, we've talked uh, a lot about going, you know, because the last couple of records, we, we have experimented with a lot more electronic, um, more dance-oriented uh, sort of sounds. And we've, we've talked about 
making a record that was maybe a little more organic back to the songs about Jane sort of approach but we'll we'll have to see we don't ever really know until we get into the studio and mm-hmm. then we kind of just have to follow what everybody's interested in okay I like that Steve Jones uh, asks what have been your best live shows you've ever done best that's probably, live shows that's probably a hard question hard question to answer um Hmm, that is a good question. I remember once we played at like a Six Flags. <laughs> this was really early on, probably about 2003. I don't remember where it was. I think it was somewhere on the West Coast. And there was hardly anyone there. But I just remember we were playing really well that night. And it was we were playing that song, The Sun. Oh, okay. And so sort of that. like at the apex of the guitar solo, like lightning and thunder started happening and it like the the skies just opened up and it started just pouring and it, it felt like we were like that it, it, we were like jamming with nature i just sounded like a total <laughs> <laughs> excuse me for that but it, just the timing of it all it just felt like almost spiritual That's it was cool. crazy it was very memorable and yeah it probably wasn't one of i haven't thought about shows. that for a long time I love it. I love that our Facebook questions are getting you to think about things that you have not been talking about. I mean, you guys Jamming are doing a nature. really good job. The internet is on collectively Facebook. rolling its eyes. I'm sorry that I said that. Uh, um, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Let's bring it back to Six Flags. Maybe yeah. next year you totally. got to book a Six Flags game. I think we'll it make was the Six go- Flags. Rain make it rain. My oh, so cool Six Flags is great. <laughs> Ro- wrote a roller coaster after that. Okay. Dolly Coates, Adam's vocals are outstanding. The whole group is awesome. I get to see them in Sacramento, California in October. She can't wait to see you guys live. Nice. Well, that's a lot of great comments, a lot of great exci- exciting people, really excited about what you guys have going on. I feel like we're you know, looking forward to new music. We got the custom guitars. Uh, so That's really, right. Thanks so much for coming by today. Damn. And thank you all for your amazing questions. Uh, and get that custom guitar if you're like an aspiring guitarist, right? Go to ErnieBallMusicMan.com. Valentine Guitar. Check it out. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you next stream. I'm joined by guitarist James Valentine. Great Hello. to have you here, James. Thanks for having me. We were just reminiscing about how I met you a long time ago. It's That's been right. Like I remember. Years. You, you yeah, didn't remember. I totally didn't remember. <laughs> That's the right. No. It's actually the opposite, but it's great to see you again. Good to see and thanks you. for coming by Huffington Post. Uh, you're in the midst of designing some custom guitars right now, which is very exciting. That's right. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about what this initiative is. Um, so I, I worked with this great company called Ernie Ball Music Man, mm-hmm. and actually I've got a, I go way back with them as well. When I moved out to Los Angeles, my band from Nebraska, I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh. Shout out, go Huskers! <laughs> um, I moved out from Lincoln to LA when my band won a national battle of the bands competition that was sponsored by Ernie Ball. Oh, okay, so you so, guys go way back. So we go way back. They actually, you know, uh, my band won $25,000 in that competition, so we used that to move out to LA to go try and make it. Soon after that, I was poached from that band by what would become Maroon 5. Mm-hmm. Um, but, so, so I, I really owe a lot to Ernie Ball. Uh, so it's really cool to be working with them all these years later. So what's the process like when you go about creating your own custom guitar? Well, I have a lot of guitars that I've been playing for many years that I really love, so I I tried to take the best elements from those guitars and combine them into one guitar. So like I really like Telecasters and I really like Gibson 335s, so we sort of put the best aspects of, of both of those together. That's this good. guitar talk can get really geeky really <laughs> quick, and it can get really sort of inside baseball. So I'll try not. I know. We'll keep, I, it, we'll keep it non-technical for the Huff player, but it sounds for, like maybe that wasn't not, in your future. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad guitar was in your future. That's for sure. What would you tell an aspiring guitarist today? Um, well, it's it's so different today. Like uh, when I was learning, I went and took lessons. I went. And took lessons in Lincoln, Nebraska at the mall. I took group lessons. Wow, which was really I didn't even fun. know they did that. They, they did do that. <laughs> um, but today, there's, there's so many awesome resources online. I mean, there's YouTube. I find myself, when, it, when we're covering a song and, and I need to learn a new song, I just go straight to YouTube. And there's like 20 different tutorials uh, mm-hmm. teaching you how to play these songs. So it's, it's an amazing time if you're, if you're trying to learn. You have all those resources. But I would also say, even though those resources are there, make sure you get out and play with, with other human beings in right. a live setting, because that's, that's a different thing. You can sound pretty good in your bedroom, but once you get with other people, 
uh, you know, your your weaknesses will show pretty quickly. So get out there, play, you know, start a band and yeah. get out there and play and play wherever you can. Well, you're going to be getting out there and playing this fall. You're going to be on tour with Maroon 5. That's right. What can we expect this time around? Well, this is, uh, this is the last tour for this record, for mm -hmm. our fifth record. Um, and, but every time we go out, we change up the set. Um, you know, we, we have some new covers that will mm -hmm. be uh, a, a surprise Ooh. that I think the fans will really dig. Okay, you're going to dig into that YouTube for the, how to play that, right? Exactly, <laughs> I did. Well, I want to get to some uh, questions and comments. Um, Eliza says, love you. Okay, that's... Oh, uh, entertainment section. <laughs> I, I can see you holding back yeah. a little bit. You're like, how can I simplify this yes. for the average Joe? Well, if you're watching on Facebook Live, by the way, uh, send us your comments, your questions, and I'll try to get them over to James on the air, so I'll be checking my phone for that. Um, who are your guitar idols? Ooh. Um, you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix, obviously. Everybody loves him. Steve Ray Vaughan oh, yeah. was really big. But I started playing guitar in the 90s, so uh, I started playing guitar the same week that Smells Like Teen Spirit came out. Oh, so, so all those grunge bands, that was huge. Nirvana. But especially Pearl Jam and, and Stone Gossard and Mike McCready from Pearl Jam. Uh, the, the record 10, mm -hmm. that's really where I learned how to play guitar. There's great songs on so that record. So we're talking early 90s, like 90, early, 91, probably. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So how did you how did you pick up the guitar? Just like t teach yourself? No, my, my older brother had a band and mm -hmm. I used to go watch them practice and I'd wait until they were done practicing and then I'd go mess around on all their instruments. Um, I was not allowed to do that. But uh, I did anyway, and uh, and I was just drawn to guitar. I just I loved it. I begged my parents to get me a guitar for a long time. They didn't think I was going to be serious about it. This was at the age where you had all these different phases. Like I was really into karate for two weeks, huh. yeah, exactly. and then I was you know I was really into baseball, and then that actually helped. I think when I was cut from the baseball team, I realized that I wasn't gifted athletically, uh -huh. and I sort of doubled down on on my devotion towards guitar. Well, good thing you were cut. Because yeah, exactly. who knows? I mean, unless you would have made it as a baseball player. Love you too, Liza. Um, and Eric Lopez says Mexico loves Maroon Five. We love Mexico. Oh, have you been, have you played Mexico recently? Yeah, we played uh, the beginning of this year. Great yes. shows. Some of my favorite shows ever. Love Mexico City. Well, hopefully, Ola. maybe he was there. Uh, Beth Ann Medina says I enjoy Maroon 5's music so much it speaks to my soul. Nice. Oh, that's really nice. And Doreen says I w I was just watching your Sugar Crash wedding video. Really awesome. Oh yeah, the wedding video, the crashing of the wedding video. That I was, remember that. That was so fun. Uh, that was the most fun video that we've ever made. Yeah. Because shooting videos can kind of be a drag, but that one was actually a blast. And I think that comes through in the video. I think that's part of the reason why uh, people really connected with it. And I don't know if I'm even allowed to say this, but we're working on a new video with David Dobkin, the director of oh, that video. Nice. That I think is, is going to be really really special. Anything you can tell us about it? Probably not. I don't want to spoil it. You don't want to spoil it. Okay, no. I get it. Um, so back to touring. Any crazy tour stories that you can share? Like, what's the craziest things that's happened on the road now being together for 15, 16 years? Um, yes, there's lots of crazy stories. Which probably save those for, like, Howard Stern. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. PG-13 here at HuffPost. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... It's funny. I mean, we we've, we've been on the road for a, a very long time, so sure. we've, we've seen lots of lots of things, and it it is as crazy as people probably think it is. But it's also way more boring and routine at the same time. Okay. Most of it's you know those long trips on the bus, a lot of time in airports. You know, that's the sort of that's the aspect of touring that you don't really see in in the movies or on. TV. Sure. Well, what I mean, you have a band. Who's you know the backseat driver? Who's the, you know who's who on the on the tour bus? Well, um, well, back in the day, you know, I used to be the literal driver. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, love it. We, James we, driving the bus. Yeah, we, we started off. Well, we started off in a van. Yeah. I don't think I'm qualified to, to drive a bus. <laughs> you don't want me driving the bus. Um, but yeah, back in the day, I used to love to drive. I mean, because we would drive all night and. When, when you were the driver, you got to pick the music. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the main reason I always wanted to be behind the wheel. I love it. You're like, this is the music we're listening to. This is it. Or what, yeah. Okay, what would you make them listen to? I would make them listen to a lot of Steely Dan okay. and Frank Zappa. Okay. 
which not all the guys were really totally into. Like, he's fired as the <laughs> band driver, that's for sure. So are you working on any new music? It's been a couple of years since uh, the fifth album came out. Yeah, we're always kind of working on new music, um, but we do have uh, we have a, a song that I think we're going to put out mm. in between this record and, and our next record, um, which we just put the finishing touches on. And we, we have some, some more songs uh, in various states of progress that, that we'll be working on at the end of this year and beginning of next year. That's cool. I feel like you could do that these days with music. It's very totally. different from them when you first got your start, I think. Uh, totally. Just putting like, out a song or an EP and then moving on to the next thing. Yeah, there's no no rules. And even with recording, we used to, like in songs about